style residential commercial, five to eight thousand. Some five to ten story buildings, eight to twelve thousand dollars to load test it. You think you can buy extra paint and extra bolts with eight to twelve thousand dollars? Yes. So when you do a load test in one flat and the guy's fires, you know, where they, how does that work out? Well, we usually bring shovels and uh, a chipper and get we some of these men can fit in those bags. Is no. Kind of like, you know, that's a that's a great question, and that's why this. That's what your guys are saying the sand. Yes. So it's very dangerous, as you can see, because you're supposed to use cherry pickers. You're supposed to do what happens when you can't get a cherry picker in there. This load test. This is called a pre-load test evaluation, which means that if they get yeses on this, what's the likelihood of a collapse? If you have an all <coughs> yes pre-load test evaluation done. So we only load test things that we have a high degree, 98, 99% guarantee that the fire escape is not going to collapse. And if you change that, many, that much software, I mean uh, hardware, what happens to, uh, the, is there a load test needed? Because as soon as you switch out too much uh, hardware, what happens to the load test? It goes away. So this is called a pre-load test evaluation. Now, can I get there and I have a, a 50 or a 50 year fire escape that all the fasteners are good, the owner's been keeping it painted, and all the connections are super tight, can we load test it? Of course we can. Will we have to do some spot checking to make sure that the through bolt into the building is done? Because we drill a little one inch hole inside the wall of the residential and stick a camera in there, look at the plate, make sure the plate is not just on the thing. So the pre-load test evaluation determines whether or not a load test has a high degree of success. And if somebody calls me and says, hey, see all that fire escape, see all that rust in the connection, just low test it anyway. What do I say? What can I say to the guy? Not going to do it. But I do need a foreman to run and stand on top of all the sandbags every day. And if you will help us participate in the low test, sir, the owner of the building, so that as we put the, we want you to sit there and as soon as you feel a little gift, just get on the radio with us, hey, it's giving a little bit. And then you could be our, our early alarm system. You know how many of those owners have decided to participate in our load test of a fire escape that doesn't have a pre-load test evaluation? So we make it silly. So again, you only load test things that have passed a pre-load test evaluation. And the load test is, get, is, is put together by a structural engineer. So if I have a thousand pounds to put on it and a structural engineer creates the, the load test criteria, you only load test it with 40% first, so only 400 pounds gets on there. Then you take measurements before, during, and after. And then you have the remaining 60% gets put on it, and you take measurements before, during, and after. But it is very dangerous. But you eliminate the danger by getting as much information on the preload test, saying that she's... And that's why load testing money should be used towards refurbishment, not towards load testing. But because we have never done one in Massachusetts, my dad's at this in 71, Right? I've never done a load test ever in Massachusetts since 71, and all my competition, I don't know of one of them that did a load test. Anybody here ever seen a load test? Absolutely. Well, here's a, here's so what it looks now like. we're loading onto a, a stair, we're doing a concentrated load of every other tread, 200 pounds. Hey Tom, he's about started. You want to note that the staircase is starting, what time? Crazy people out on the limb. Just keep flying. <laughs> right. But this is a fully refurbished fire escape, guys. So, you know, there's no danger here. We, we basically did everything that, and on fire escapes that are all linear, we actually have this fire escape tied to the fire escape above it in case there was a collapse. Got it? But I just wanted to show you guys the silliness, but also the physical work necessary. Can you the camera for me? Otherwise, we'll go to, we'll go to an iPhone cabinet. So it's basically staircase, it's basically sandbags at the very top cascading their way down. And it takes all day. All day, if not two days. Yes, question? So if, the, so if that was a, a fully refurbished ship, why would you move the load test that day request? Anybody want to answer the question? Because I think I... Just, 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 show just to show how silly it was. So no need. This Plus it was a Harvard fire escape and I said, oh, it's got to give some credibility there. So Does the load have to stay there for a certain Yeah, oh, almost an hour. And I got to measure before, during, and after. And the deflection is no more than 316. Question. Just an idea suggestion. Uh, yeah. You, know, using all you want to sand join our load test team? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, I mean, using the sandbags, which is pretty prehistoric. I'm just wondering, you probably uh, invent some kind of uh, uh, 
uh, water tube that you just, you know, an empty plastic, you know, rubber thing with a water faucet and just, you know, set it up and then just fill it up with water, you're out of the way, and then drain it after. You know, and this would be a great thing if there was so much money to be made in load testing. So since this recording, how many load tests have I done? Not And I still have extra fingers. Because load testing is not a norm. Uh, just, you know, but yes, all fire escapes get load tested with sandbags, water bags, which is what you're talking about, um, and also plates like an elevator, you know, the, the lead plates. And also, a lot of times, if the room allows, you actually put the weight on the ground, run a cable through the system, Got it? And so you have to lift the weight at the ground yeah. up an inch. Which is this activity. So this is us load testing using cable up 10 stories. And we used, actually use the tail end of a truck to lift. But we never lifted it off the ground. You know, we needed to exert 3,000 pounds. The truck weighed 7,000 pounds. And so, and again, there's a cage up above there so nothing will fall on your head. But basically, we use a uh, you know, what do you call it, a, um, no, the, the mechanism there, the, uh, excuse? no, we have the chain fall, we have the chains, we have the cables, but there's a, um, there's a scale, but there's a thing that when you pull it, I forgot, now it's, it's tripping, but it comes back to your monitor that says 33,000, 2,000, 5,000 pounds, whatever it is, but it's the, uh, it's the, the, the electronic piece that basically as it exerts force, it translates what that is in poundage. All right, getting back to tags. Do you guys understand now why it's so important that a fire protection system, every fire protection system should have a tag on it? So you don't want to use these tags, then maybe you should use ribbon. Maybe you should have, you know, just go out there with, you know, ribbon that you tie to a fire escape and tie white ribbon to it that says it's good. Tie yellow ribbon to it that means it's under repair. Tie red ribbon to it. Anything to signal to the fire official, to the building, I'm sorry, the, the fire prevention or the firemen that are going to be showing up that there's something wrong with the fire escape. Got it? Otherwise, these tags are in use in certain cities. And if you want, please call Lowell and call Everett. And just so you know, this is not an overnight success. This is a three to five year program where you're going to start with these checklists and you're going to start getting the mindset changed because you're going to get some blowback. And the blowback is going to come from your community. The blowback may come from your state. The blowback may come from your, your own building commission who may not want to touch this and want to keep the ostrich head still buried where. But as soon as you get a lawsuit in there, as soon as you get an injury or a death on a fire escape, what happens? You need to set some standards on your city to say what is the standard for an inspector, what's the standard for a repair, what's the standard for paint. And again, we talked about this. If you want to already go see, go to seattle.gov, portland.gov, go to Reg 4 in LA, go to uh, Lowell, go to Everett, uh, go to New Jersey. See, uh, you know, Jersey City is one of our major, uh, another uh, a city that has adopted these programs. So this is the procedures now. This is talking about, and I'm going to jump, I'm going to hold it here and most likely go to. This is what, how fire escapes are built. Does anybody give me a time? Time check, please. Quarter of 12. Quarter of 12? Uh, 12 o'clock it ends, right? Yeah. All right, so we're going we're gonna to basically skip. We do some of our best work last minute. Okay, guys, everybody go to... Um, and I go to, but I want to show you what's here on uh, Farscape, uh, Farscapes uh, MA .gov. So, see the, the website Farscapes MA. Okay. So basically, any city in any town. Question. Farscapes MA talks about your code, right here. It talks about all the other codes, including the OSHA code and the NFPA. So this is an education website. So any vendor, any uh, owner of a property, any city official. Everything, we posted it all on this page, okay? See this tag right here, this uh, certification right there? If you touch it, it'll open it up to a blank one of these with no name on top, no city name, no fire escape engineers, nothing. It's a blank one of the exact one you have. 
So they can just print it online and they can just use that as a questionnaire and fill it out on their own paperwork. They don't have to use this document, you understand? But they can use the 25 questions to, if you want them to follow an industry standard questionnaire. Got it? Otherwise, they can go to seattle.gov and get a questionnaire. Question? It's dot com, right? So yeah, fire escapes. So make sure it happens. That's fireescapesma.com. All right, guys? Look. Yeah, fire escapes MA. See, this, see what, it, what it says here? Five steps to certification. Schedule it. Get an engineer involved. Submit, uh, submit the evaluation whether you fail or pass. They want you guys want a copy. And then if it passes, you can pass it under an affidavit or you can pass it under low test. It's explained here. Number five is very simple. It says call the local city official to confirm what's being said here. Don't call us. Call you in case you, they disagree with what the steps are. Got it down here. This is all videos and stuff of typical Farscape reviews. This is showing what a certification looks like when it's properly filled out. You only need three pages. In case you fail, you should have the six pages filled out and some photos to be submitted to you as a fail. Got it? So if it passes, only the first three pages. If it fails, you guys need some in information. And if you want to know what an engineer's oversight report looks like, which is like 70 pieces of paper, click on that and show you what it is. Got it? Over here, click on here, it's going to show you load testing. So some of those things I just talked about, load test, the clients can see what a load test is. See this over here? This is, click, you click on that, that's the, the frightening, all the people that have died in the U.S. That's just the, uh, the uh, pictures of, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the video and the audio from all the Channel 7s, Channel 5s all over the country. See up to the right, right top? Industry standards, you click on there, it goes to the National Fire Escape Association, which basically a lot of these videos are sitting on there for anybody just to click and just watch and listen, including this video will make its way up there. Got it? So this will give you a tour all around the world, right? And now let's with that, we only got 15 minutes, let's ask the, the, the questions. Everybody pull out their, their piece. My piece. And what you want to do is you want to sort of fill this in yourself. So grab a pencil and pretend you're an inspector. I'm going to tell you what the question is asking. And you say yes or no to the question on the fire escape. So this covers every fire escape ever built. Balconies, balconies with ladders, balconies with stairs. So fill one of these out for yourself to see if some inspector comes in and says it's too difficult, I don't understand it. You say, dude, I can fill that thing out myself. Got it? Everybody? This is the fast track version of it. Ready? So first page. Basically, I want you to give me who the company is that's going to be inspecting. I need the building owner and the building agent. And I need you to draw more or less in the center here, I want you to draw where the building fire escape is. So give me a little box or a rectangle and put a little box on the back saying where's the fire escape? Is it on the back, on the front? <coughs> the next one, Who's have, who has jurisdiction? Is this fire department or building department? That's the next one. Repair vendor is the next question. Well, if the repair vendor, if this was a certification, we want to know who the repair vendor was and what's, his, what's the permit number. Got it? So this is a checklist item. If things are missing here, somebody took it, somebody cheated. The next question we want to know from the engineer inspecting this, is this a pass-fail report or a, or a failed report with, an, with attached repair documents? So this is a pass-fail. Can you use it to pull a permit? Pass-fail, can you use it to pull a permit? It tells you what the problem is. It doesn't tell you where it is and how, many of it, how much of it exists. So a pass-fail is nothing more than it passed or it failed so you can determine whether or not it needs a full engineer's report. This asks you, is this a pass-fail or is this a full engineer's report? Because you've got to submit more documents with this if this is already a report for permit. The next question we ask you, how did you look at it? Did you get on it or you looked at it from the ground? Because sometimes if it's dangerous, I don't want you up there. But every now and then they're going to tell you that they looked at it from the ground and, they, and there was no re they couldn't get access that day. So will you accept the fire stick that's in relatively good condition and the guy didn't even get on it? Will you expect a report? Great. The final result, did it pass or fail? It failed. What's the next critical question? Life safety, any life safety issues, like what? Like treads are falling, it's pulling away from the building. Because who needs to do that immediately if there's life safety? Both fire and building. So that's why that question is there. And they have how much time to fix it? They have usually 24 hours to get that resolved or meet your satisfaction. If it needs routine maintenance, what's the average time they get to fix routine maintenance? 30 days? Got it? Now, if this is a certification, there's only four possible certifications. I certified this fire escape by low test, or I certified this fire escape by other evidence of strength, meaning it was fully refurbished. The next one is I, the fire escape is certified with an opinion affidavit with a disclaimer of liability. What's a disclaimer of liability? 
Isn't there, didn't the Massachusetts already give me that document on the Boston one, doesn't it have? In the middle, what's that called? The golden parachute, what's it say? To the best? My ability. Uh, by information, knowledge, belief, the fire escape is in conformity with the, building code of the, with the Massachusetts building code. That's all you're going to get. So if you accept that, it's saying that that's what you're accepting. So it's not a low test, it's not a certification, it's an opinion. And it comes with liability, meaning there's a disclaimer, okay? And the final one, it says the fire escape failed. And it's not structured style or has not been kept painted. In this box down here, you just put what code are we using? 1001.3, are we using IRC, are we using some other code? But typically, this will be filled out with 1001.3. See at the very bottom? You need everybody's signatures. On the right side, you know what it needs because you won't accept this? It says, did you, the building official, accept this at the counter? Or did you accept this at the site when you did your inspection? So now, what time you in? Can you accept certificates through the mail anymore? So the guy can come in and speak with your director so you can one-on-one -on -one with him saying, what did you do? Or you say, I'll see you at the site and I'll accept this document, but you mail it in, will you accept it anymore? Got it? So it basically now it's bringing you guys back in. All right, next page. At the very top, it has the address, because some of these things get separated and people can use different documents to marry together, but everything has the same sequence of, uh, of ID number or the sequential number, the same questions are asked again. This checklist at the very top, guys, that is not the inspection. That is just telling you in general that everything is fair, or everything is poor, and various conditions, and in some cases, is anything missing, or is there any life safety concerns, right? But basically, is there anything left after treads, stringers, rails, structural, <laughs> cement, paint, grating, ladders, cantilevers, and catwalks? Is there anything else left on a fire escape? So we're gonna ask the questions, in 25 questions, we're gonna ask that below, but that's just a general little checkbox that they check, you know, the fire escape was fair here, and fair there. You can have an overall fire escape that still fails by, because of a tread problem. You know what I'm saying? So overall, the fire escape is fair, but you can have a tread that's poor. So did the fire escape pair, uh, pass? No. So there's an overall question, just in general, though, fire escape is not too bad. It just needs a couple of things done to it. So that's what that is about. Question number one. All fabrication, installation, and maintenance of the fire escape is to code and it meets industry standard on the date of installation. That means, <clears throat> Even if the fire escape fails today, I'm just telling you, it looks like a chocolate and vanilla fire escape like all the other ones on the same street. Everybody clear on that? So you can get a yes there, but it has nothing to do with the certification of the fire escape. It says it looks like it was built to industry standard. Number two, if there's no pre-existing non-conforming issues requiring AHJ information or involvement, that means I got a wacky fire escape that there's no catwalk, that there's the, the rails are wrong, the single line rails. So that's what question number two is about. If all of a sudden I'm not going to certify anything that has something that even built in 1965, I would still question today. I'm going to lay that on you guys. Number three, all welds passed by visual observation only, unless noted they were either rebolted or low tested or x-rayed. So I will give you an opinion on a, on a weld, but I will not certify a weld unless you let me x-ray it, low test it. But if you take a weld and you put a bolt through it, guess what happens? Guess what happens to that weld? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Goes away. Now, if I take a well that has rust inside and I put a bolt, what's the problem? I didn't cure the problem. So I have to cut that weld, open that connection, remove all the rust, prime the interior, inject it with silicone, close it back up, now the bolt, do I re-weld it? No. No. Because what's the master now? The bolt. What's the slave? The weld. So when you duplicate something, the new connection becomes the master and the primary. Got it? Number four, overall the fire escape passes. That's all it is. Overall does the fire escape pass? If it's yes, then you're gonna get a lot more yeses coming forward. The, the answer here should be no, there's a few issues. And that's what these gray bars are all about. By the way, when you go back to the top of the page, you see that gray bar at the very top, it says, this docu document expires 30 days from the delivery to the owner agent via email or mail unless design professional or others are retained for engineer oversight and writing. So this pass fail has what deadline date on it? 30 days. 30 days. So if somebody wants to come in two months, three months later, try to get a permit with this document, can you pull a document with this document? I mean, a permit with this, just this, just this document. This pass fail. Can you pull a permit? Nope. What do you need? You need somebody controlling the doc, controlling the situation, which is an engineer or others acceptable to you a permit and a repair document, something with photos, drawings, markings. Somebody's got to watch that vendor. Are you going to watch the vendor? 
All right, quickly, let's, let's see if, I ca if I'm still catching every fire escape. Some fire escapes have footings to the ground. You want those checked out? Otherwise, you say NA. This doesn't have legs to the ground. So there's an NA basically excluded. The next one, number six, walls of attached fire escape pass visually. You know what that is? That's not where the steel goes into the wall. That's the overall wall. I'm just giving you an opinion that more or less, I'm looking at this wall, there's no huge bulge. If I got bulges on the entire wall, has this, what does that do to my fire escape? Can I continue with any load testing or any repairs on my fire escape? If I have a bulging wall? So I'm telling you, and it's, not, it's just an opinion, that the wall looks like it's bulging, so we have a, further meetings that are gonna be necessary. Got it? Supports into the masonry wall. Pass. That means we have a masonry building and that the, the cement going in looks okay or not. Through bolts into wood structures. What's that mean? Every wood structure has to have a through bolt. Otherwise, if it has lag bolts, is that okay? No. Nope. So we cover wood structures and masonry structures. Platforms, all platforms, whether they have grating, slats, wood, cement, is covered on that question. Is that platform in good condition? And that means all the platforms. Okay? Stairs and stringers. That means the outside flats, guys, not the stairs. The stringers are the outsides. Are they looking in good condition? So we've covered those. Stair treads, plates, uh, grating, bolts. Now it's just the individual tread. Are they all in good condition? Are they falling apart? Railings, all the railings. Railings on the platforms, railing going down the stairs. Are they good? Next question. Ladders to the roof or ladders to grade. And are they complete to grade? How many people here have fire escapes that end nine feet off the ground? That is incomplete to grade. You know why? Because the code says, back in the day when these were being built, that you could build a fire escape ladder all the way to the nine foot level, and what must be the rest? The rest could be a drop ladder or a cantilever. So people took that code and built all fire escapes to the nine, the nine foot level and did what? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> So every time we examine a fire escape that is not complete to grade, we say that's an incomplete fire escape. Guys, help me here now. This is a major issue that we're having in a lot of cities. So when I get there and I need to build the remaining piece of this fire escape so it has a missing component, do I have to do, and the fire escape ladder is nine feet off the ground, do I need to now make a staircase to the ground or do, can I continue the ladder to the ground, either with a drop or a cantilever to the ground? I mean, let, let's keep it simple. Let's, can I do a, 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 a guillotine ladder to the ground, you know, on cable so that it drops two to three feet per second? Or can I do one of those fold outs? And I need everybody to sort of weigh in on this because we're having this issue in Marblehead and it may have to go to the board for three. So it's, a, it's not a new fire escape fabrication, got it? It's a missing component, just like a catwalk would be a missing component, just like a, a, an additional rail would be a missing component. So what's your take? Do I, is this a, as a matter of fact, at 5 o'clock today, I'm meeting with the building inspector um, in Marblehead on this very question. What's, what is it? Is it a new construction? Because no new fire escape. Maintaining existing. Maintaining existing. Yes? Oh, it's oh, somebody disagrees with you. Fight him, I'll fight me. Continue to, under the IEPC, it's legal as if they were stamped off and signed off. Otherwise, you have to sign up a dangerous structure. It's legal. They don't have to do anything. I, I, anybody will agree with him and disagree with him what he's saying there? Because it was built to code when it was built. He's right. Yeah. Right. But when it was built to code, it was and supposed to code the code the back then said in 1965, this is an actual case, right. all fire escapes must be to grade. That fire escape is not to grade. And there's something that happened in the past 50 years. Somebody said, people are breaking into my building. The guy went there and hacked off nine, in, nine feet of it and threw it away. You know, or somebody built it. They got down there, there was a little envelope by the tree, and the guy said, looks good to me, right? So today, I can't sign off on a dangerous situation, because if you get hurt, I'm going to get sued. Go back to hacked off. Okay, hacked off. Hacked off, then it's a repair. Okay, so repair. I'm putting back something that's missing. What's your thing? Your other option is you can cite it under dangerous instruction that has a whole different appeals around everything else. We want to stop. I, I, I don't want to go to appeals. I want to basically say I'm putting back a missing component. You don't have that choice. I know. I'm What's saying, does option? anybody else agree with me that a, when you get to a fire escape, if there's a missing component of a fire escape in order to make it complete, can is there a variance required or can we just put back a missing component? So I have many people that have a fire escape, a ladder to a roof, no catwalk because they changed the, they used to have a, a catwalk that they made a wood, let's say. They removed it, put in the rubber roof, and they left it. This happened in Taunton. Uh, it wasn't Taunton. Could have been Taunton. Okay, 
but the catwalk was missing. And then, it, and then you have to find your way to the edge of the roof and pick up the ladder that went to the ground. And the ladder, so what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the fix it. Fill in the missing piece. Am I correct in that statement? Guys, this is everybody's opinion on this. It's very important. I think so. It's a repair? That's right. It's not a new construction? No. no. Right? It's missing, a, it's missing a component, and you, and now, so it's not that new component. And, and if I build a ladder, say, no new ladders. You can't build ladders. No, no. I'm putting back a missing component. Huh? What's the official He said he wants a variance. No, uh, he wants the three-member board. He wants to. Uh, he wants to go for. Uh, he wants the board to basically make that decision because he wants staircases on the missing component. He goes, I'm not going to allow you to build a ladder to complete this. And some of these ladders are only five feet left. There's only five feet more, and we just want this ladder just needs another five feet. Oh no, can't build ladders. No ladders are allowed. The code says fire escape ladders are not allowed. So you see where we get into some of these things. To me, nationwide. Every fire escape that was built in 1965, I can replace indefinitely and repair and maintain indefinitely for the life of that building. And if something gets hit by a truck, something gets hacked off by a, a guy stealing it for steel or whatever, I can put back what's there. So if it's ladders to the ground, I can put ladders back to the ground. But some code officials basically take today's code, apply it to yesterday's installation. I said, that's, that's my, my spin on that. Lack of common sense, that's the problem you get with. I just need some help here. So, in, in, in here, most of these people would call that a repair, and you're putting back a missing component, just like I would put back a catwalk, right? All right, guys, let's get. I'll, I know this time is tight. Balance ladders. Balance ladders are anything with a cable that drops it down. So, I cover balance ladders on number 14. Number 15, cantilevers are covered. They're covered because, you know, all cantilevers need to be weighted correctly. And they have to have a release arm on them, so they, when you release them, they drop two to three feet per second. Catwalks are covered, because you know how many roofs you guys have that there is no catwalk? And by the way, when we tell people, you don't have to put a metal fire escape back, because it must match the building type. So can a client put back a wood structure that meets the, the, the fire rating? Can they put a wood uh, catwalk intermingled with a metal catwalk on a wood structure? Can they do a whole fire escape in wood? So it has to match the building type. So certain building types, you can never use wood, but a lot of times in your residential, the client does not have to pay 25, 35, 45,000 for a brand new fire escape today on a typical four to five, three to five story. They can get it done for what, $15,000? All wood structure to a third or fourth or fifth floor? They're monstrous because they're gonna have lace to the ground, but everybody can build a fire escape out of wood, correct? Everybody can build catwalks out of as long as it matches the building type, correct? All right, all components, doors, windows, and window guards, great cages and grates pass. Meaning, as I'm inspecting this, I gotta look at the doors, make sure they look like they function. The windows open and close, is that an important question during an examination? All electrical power is 10 feet away, so every now and then I got a power line coming right to my fire skip. I'm like, but they gotta cut it. So they can do certain things to it. The electrical company can put the cowling around it and do all kinds of things, or they have to physically, because when you're fighting a fire hose on that thing, guess what's gonna happen? Somebody's gonna cook. Overall, the fire escape is not illuminated due to pre-existing code. So many of these fire escapes will not have a light outside and not required to have one after my examination. Most of them, because when they were put up 50, 75 years ago, was lighting required? Is it required today? Right? Um, number 20, overall the fire escape has no exterior obstructions. Bikes, uh, cans, and all. So uh, is, you think that's a good question to have here? TVs. Collecting TVs, satellite dishes, you know what I'm saying? This is where it's all covered. Here's another one, 21, overall the fire escape has no fl flammable storage, meaning gas cans, uh, grills. Is that a good question to ask? The fire escape, tell me what it's made of. Is it made out of painted steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, wood, or a mix, or other? Because we have some crazy fire escapes made of crazy things out there, but does that cover everything you've ever seen? And at number 23, it asks if the fire escape has been painted or stained because of the wood, and it asks about the lead paint. Number 24, has the owner been notified that it's because it's older than 78 that EPA rules apply? So whoever's gonna scrape and paint this must minimally have an EPA renovator's license. Whoever's gonna be 
repairing this, they can't weld because it has lead and it's in a bolted structure anyway. Number 25, others. You know what others is? That's the catch-all because I've got some fire escapes that, you know, they have a, a fire escape that ends over a restaurant and they just put in a beautiful awning and guess what? Guess what's not on there? A drop, a hole or anything to get through. Guys, if I'm, if all of a sudden I gotta make a little remarks, is there a little remark section in case I miss anything? And the repair report, this is what you need to go to certification. Repair report by design professional, uh, at, if, if required. So you know, just so, a very small repair is not a permit required. Permit by license, vendor EPA license, progress and final inspection by the, by the design professional, submit a final certification by load test, other evidence of strength, and still opinion affidavit, because you're gonna get some of those shoved down your throat, and then you repeat every five years. Next page, guys. I have to call you and say, listen, I'm about to do this fire escape. Is there any other request other than the norm? So you, this is your page. You get to tell us that you want to witness it or any special recommendations. And then down here is every code available to mankind regarding fire escapes. Got it? Next one, guys. If you want, your city can have its own specific story with your phone number and everything at the very bottom it says, this is what I want, this is how I want, this is a standard. Got it? That's what this page is for. Your room for tears on there? Huh? Your room for tears? I know. And the final one, number six, who's this for? Every vendor that's going to work on that project must fill this out. Guess what they want at the very top? They want his license number for his business. Huh? You understand? Then they want his construction license number. Guess what? Some guys are using their business license as their construction license. They want the workers comp, their liability. They want references. And this basically makes that whoever's gonna repair this fire escape must pull a permit. And can you use this document to pull a permit? This is just a pass fail. Can you use a pass fail to pull a permit? You need a repair report. So with all this, this is the mousetrap now that we're getting to help you guys get fire escapes under control over the next three to five years. Now, again, Everett and Lowell is who I would call because we've been burning their candle for many years now, and they got all the problems that have happened, some good news, some bad news, and we've modified accordingly. But give them a call. They've already suffered for you as to whether this program is working, not, not working, so give them a buzz, okay? And with that, I'm going to open it. That's kind of pretty much the end. It's 12 o'clock. Everybody wants to go grab something. And any questions, anybody, if you want to give me your card, if you want a certain book, this video will be up online usually within two weeks, so in case somebody in your office didn't make it, you can make them watch this class. This is always available forever. You don't have to sign in at the National Firescape Association. You can just watch these. Go on any YouTube channel, just type in Firescape Seminar, and you'll see past classes from Samboa, MBCIA, Western, Western Building Officials Association, and such. All right, so thank you very much for coming in. I'll be around for another 15 minutes if you have specific questions. Give me your card and I'll send you a book. I think I have some books out here. Well, us people already came and grabbed them. Do you have cards? You want you want a free program? You want us to help you put together a program? Thanks, Tim. Mm -hmm. I do. It's, uh, it's actually top there. Thanks a lot. Yeah, there's one more books here. Uh, I think he might have given all of them. Uh, give me good. Uh, you can steal. You can steal that one right there. Thank you.
Sure do. Beautiful, beautiful answer. So, uh, in uh, here's the story of the aluminum. Mm -hmm. More, a lot of the parts that down here in the uh, top of Fall River in southeastern Massachusetts was built by a guy who ran an aluminum factory and he was running uh, aluminum siding and then he started taking down fire sticks, put up his aluminum and put it back and he put it back all substandard. I actually have taken some of the fire escapes down of his and the back of this one back all oh, this. Oh, I'm here. And they still to this day build up aluminum fire escapes, which is okay, but they need to build up the standard and they're not equal to the 100 miles per square foot. As a matter of fact, a lot so of times. So bring me in. Put you, put you in. Cut it. Did you it? you bring it back over once? You know now, what you're saying is different when you're saying on your site, dangerous structure, dangerous kind of ingress, which is it's common. Right there on but that's the order, because the appeal is possible. It's going to get away. 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 Call Everett. Call, uh... uh See, to, this always started a commission. I know. We always started the authority this. Same scenario. Rubber stamp core on a building in Everett, right? With the core, this this engineer that's just been rubber stamping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Take your eyes off. Yes. I'm going to finish with Martin. Yes. Yes. There you go. I know, but you can you can ask for additional information. So call Martin. Say Martin is in the court case right now with the same thing. A bad landlord and a bad engineer. Say Martin, what did you do and what are you doing? Give me the answer. So ask Martin in the city of Everett and say Martin, tell me what to do. Because they've suffered this for the past two years. And now they walk down. So Martin walked down. This is what happened. Martin took my class because he was too old. He brought me in for Everett. And I said, he went down and brought me with him. And he said, okay. No, no. Well, train. He goes, I got a certificate that said this fire escape is fine. Tell me what I'm not, what am I missing here? So all of a sudden, as I train him, uh, not all of them, he, he goes, he goes, this is, this is a false, this is a false document. He goes, great. Yes. So this document, I challenge this document. Now you can bring your own expert witness. And he brought me home. And he says, okay, Cisco, tell me what I'm looking for. And as I gave him fundamentals on connections, he goes, well, that clearly is not, that clearly is not, that clearly is not. And then he pulled up the little test card. He says, okay, you want me to do this? Get it low test. He's using it to low test. No, no, no. He uses it to low test, but then all of a sudden put the guy on notice that this is a, they went and got another engineer. So they, they, they saw it quickly. And they said, what we, and, and they said, use this document. Don't, don't use this document. Either fill out this document or, you, or ask the questions. Right? You sell the document. You can't just No, you can't. You can just recruit, recruit yeah. Because yeah. I'll recommend it to my wife. Because it's through the oh, National oh, Fire Escape oh, Association. Oh, so this is, you know, it's almost oh, like airbags. Oh, 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 uh, Mercedes, you know, made the, invented the airbag. Oh, oh my goodness. And they put them all in electric cars. They said, you're going to be back in so nobody else can use this. That's what they We want everybody else to use it. So that's why on the web page, when you click on it, Sorry, it's free, it's, and it doesn't have my name at the top. You can put Joe's engineering firm, well, we and when Joe Engineers comes and says, "Dude, I ain't gonna find that's not a civil, you know, a government document, blah blah," said, "You know, what? you're right." Well, have to see, we can't name it. Right, right. You say, why don't you listen? Can you answer the first twenty-five questions on your letter? Hold on the You can either write this question out or all that. Or it's just a power quote on the coast. They're all uh, engineering. They all have this. Yeah, I have engineers. Right. I do, well, yeah, but you, but you do. You mean because once you understand that you are, you are now it's suspect to you. Correct. So your job is either to pull the low test card and say, let, let me get a, a peer, a peer, uh, a peer. Uh, Where does it say this? You have to reference the IFC. What? Oh, we're training, so you can you can help me. That's great. Let's wrap this up. Uh, sure.
All fire escapes shall be examined and tested, certified every five years by design professional, others acceptable to the building official. So fire escapes shall be examined and or tested and certified. One of those tests. If you don't know what tested means, there you go in here. But the authority have to choose to shall approve any fire escape by low test. Is the same thing as the IFC. So. I put all the quotes here, so I'm going to read these questions. Uh, this is there to help you okay. understand you did have power. Now you have power. I have to accept this document. And because you just delivered it in the mail, I want to go down and check it out. I went down there and check it out, just like any other guy. I'm done. You're like, do we leave all this here? So how about if you. Look at shoddy electrical. How would you verify that it's not a big electrical expert? I said, listen, it's not a field. I got a guy that's nothing but electrical. Come on down here. What do you think? Oh, dude, wrong wire, wrong thing. You appreciate it. We call Martin because they they took it to the next take the challenge there. Actually, actually, you want to call you want to call Martin, and you call Sean. Sean is the Basically, throwing all these guys to the to the board to remove that license. Right. That's what Virginia. Uh, that's what we've done. You did, uh, call uh, Sean and say. He's ninety-three years old. He's just. Can you order yourself a better license? Right. But that's that's what I'm saying. So, uh, in 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 Lowell, he threw them out. He took he took that he took that license. That big in Lowell. That's the job. That's our closest. That's the threat. Thank you. No. I want to make. I want to make a. So, do we have any more of those twenty book ones? You know, yeah, you know, they cost you. You're sorry with that. I told you. The guy, you know, I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry about it. There's only one person really asked. So, you know, you heard me. So please take one for jurisdiction. I try to have questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, yeah, one thing I was thinking, so I thought I got there, it. In the, uh, it wasn't where I was supposed to be. You guys can do the same. I don't know if the okay. state's fine. No, no worries. Do you have 20 state inspectors? What about, about this is our self stage? I've never talked about this. Is this our self stage? Felix. I, I'm in touch with Felix. I'm in touch with Felix. Yeah, Felix is your. Felix is your. Felix is your. This is number three. I'm going to have to do it. Here's what I'm trying to say. We'll get with Robbie Anderson. Well, can you guys call and and uh, grease the 